Hello, brothers and sisters. All glory and honor and praise goes to my heavenly Father, my Lord and Savior, Jesus. Thank y'all for tuning in for this Bible study lesson on raptured into heaven or flee into the wilderness. And we're going to mainly look and figure this thing out. So this is not an attack against anybody who's believing in the preacher rapture or the mid-trip rapture or the post are those who believe that you flee into the wilderness this is just a lesson for you to learn and grow on and you make a decision conscious decision of whether to believe in the book or what you've been told goes out the way you know my faith you know my belief Jesus Christ is God come in the flesh born of virgin Mary now the reason why I disclose that is because you need to test the spirits from people and what they believe if they do not disclose their faith and it don't line up with the scripture and I'm finding brothers and sisters out here who's not lining up because they're preaching and teaching that Jesus wasn't born of the Holy Spirit they're teaching some people out here uh, are teaching that Jesus was conceived of Joseph and that's a bold-faced lie you got to read the scripture study the scriptures that the scriptures may soak into you that you oh, may remember when you hear stuff from other people and you need the Holy Spirit as well to help you remember when you hear people preaching and teaching this word that way you can test them by what they are saying are they speaking what's written are they filling in gaps where they shouldn't be filling in gaps you will know all these things if you study scripture all right um, let's move on with this lesson now according to the promise of Jesus Christ we would be saved before the great tribulations and we know that this is true if you turn with me to Luke chapter 21 in verse 36 we're going to read uh, what we have our faith in is is the escape Luke chapter 21 and verse 36 watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man now the words the, the Lord's words will not come back void this is a promise it would happen it, it telling you to watch and pray always that you are counted worthy to escape all the these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man so how can you escape all these things if you don't know what they are so you literally have to read what Luke 21 says and you escape all those horrible things that is going to come during the great tribulations if you watch and pray always and the Lord will open you up to exactly what you need to do to escape these things let's go to the second promise because there's always a witness there's always a second witness Revelations chapter 3 verse 10 and a lot of my brothers and sisters already know these verses but for those who are new they have to get a they have to see it with their own eyes because thou hast kept the word of my patience I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth now this is from John who wrote revelations and this is the promise of the Lord if you keep the word of his patience he will also keep you from the hour of temptation the hour of trial which is the great tribulations to come 
So there is an escape. But we are here to question, where is that escape before the great tribulations? Where is it? Well, we're going to read here in scripture and we're going to find out just exactly where is this escape. But first, we need to discover what is this patience he's talking about? Because thou hast kept the word of my patience. Well, we're going to go over some scriptures that prove what is his word? What is the word of his patience? Turn with me to Revelations 12. Uh, 14 and 12 Revelations 14 and 12 Here is the patience of the saints Here are they that keep the commandments of God And the faith of Notice there's two conditions Number one You keep the commandments of God Which is the Old Testament Number two You keep the faith of Jesus Christ Which is the New Testament so for everybody out there saying that the Old Testament is gone, please, you're going to be um, either um, you're going to either have to go through the Great Tribulations to be tried and tested, or you're going to be killed during it because you believe not the truth. Now, let's go with where um. To Revelations 12 and 17 and the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed these are the ones who didn't make it to the wilderness as it says in this chapter a woman fled into the wilderness they didn't exactly make it to the great escape so somewhere their faith failed and they didn't believe where they're supposed to go and so when Satan got here he went to make war with that remnant that do what which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ there are those two conditions again that word keep means obey the commandments of God which is his laws remember Jesus Christ came and walked in the laws of God by faith alone and then Christ said be as he be be holy as he holy so Christ is telling you to be like he do do like he do obey the commandments of God obey his commandments and you will live so you have these two conditions of keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ um Go to Revelations 22 and 14. 22 and 14. We have to go over this here to discover who is going to make it. At least y'all would know why you're not going to make it. If you don't make it. 22 and 14. Blessed are they that do his commandments. That they may have right to the tree of life. Who's the tree of life? Jesus. And may enter in through the gates into the city. What's the city? New Jerusalem. Which is going to have the 12 gates on it. With the 12 tribes of Israel's name on it. That's the New Jerusalem to come. Turn to Psalms 25. There's always another witness to all this, y'all. Psalms 25 and 10. It says, All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth unto such as keep his covenant. That means obey his commandments. Oh, keep his covenant and his testimonies. The testimonies of both the books the Old Testament and the New Testament of Jesus Christ this is all matching up isn't it there's two conditions even in the Old Testament there was two conditions 
and in the New Testament there's two conditions there so everybody is thinking once saved always saved and that you only had to say the prayer and that's it and you can pretty much do whatever you want now eat whatever you want the devil is a lie and he got you to see because if them commandments was gone it wouldn't be written and matter of fact Jesus Christ would have never told you uh, what I'm about to read in Matthews uh, 5 and 17 Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass away, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. So all the preachers, past ministers that are out here telling you to forsake the law, to let it pass away before all things are fulfilled, the devil's a liar. All the people that you subscribe to telling you don't be getting to all this legalism in God's law, the devil's a liar. It's time that you turn away from what man has always been teaching you on here and pick up the good book and read and understand what Jesus is telling you. His commandments. Obey His commandments. Just as He obeyed the Father's commandments. Jesus' commandments are the same as the commandments that are in the Old Testament. If you write down the whole list of commandments that Jesus Christ gave. They're the same as the ones that are in the Old Testament. Even Paul said a few things about the commandments go to Romans chapter 8 and verse 4 8 and 4 that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit Back up to uh, chapter 7, verse 12. Wherefore the law is holy, and the commandment holy, and just and good. So why are the preachers, pastors, ministers teaching you that the law is bad and wicked? Why, why, do you, why does your face curl up in anger when somebody mentions you have to do the law of God? When Paul is telling you the law is holy and the commandment holy and just and good. And verse 14 says, for we know that the law is spiritual. So the law is spiritual. Go over to verse chapter 8 verse 2. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus have set me free, have made me free from the law of sin and death. So you got two laws here that Paul has been talking about. Sometimes he don't mention that he's talking about the law of the spirit. He'll just say law. You have to figure that out though. So there is a law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. There's a certain way that you must be and become. And the two great commandments that Jesus Christ gave cover all the laws. So he really simplified it if you understand. Love God with all your heart, mind, your heart, your body, your soul. And love your neighbor as yourself. In these two are, for, are all the law fulfilled. I mean, all the law hang. That means all the law is fulfilled in just those two commandments. So he was giving you an easy way to fulfill them while you're inside of him. When we're in the body of Christ, we put on the face of Christ and we obey Christ. Um, anyway. Now let's um let's move on to um go to John chapter fourteen verse twenty one. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, 
he it is that loveth me and he that loveth me shall be loved of my father and I will love him and will manifest myself to him verse 23 Jesus answered and said unto him if a man love me he will keep my words the same as saying he will keep my commandments and my father will love him and we will come unto him and make our bow with him so he's saying the same thing he said in verse 21 go to verse 31 but that the world may know that I love the father and as the father gave me commandment even so I do arise let us go hence so even as the father gave him commandments he do them and Christ is telling us to be like him. So we are to obey Christ who is obeying the Father by faith alone. It's no longer by your deeds or your works because you're in the body of Christ. Everything becomes Christ's now. Everything that you do is no longer your works or your deeds. That's what is put away. So you have to understand the difference between your own works and deeds versus the works and deeds of Christ that is in you now. This is the, the answer to the mystery of faith in Christ. When you're in the body of Christ, you fulfill the commandments of God and the testimony of faith of Jesus Christ in his body. You no longer are you anymore. Uh, go to chapter 15, verse 10. John 15 and 10. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. Drop down to 12. This is my commandment, that ye love one another as I have, as I have loved you. So, um, let, let's go to Galatians 14 and... I mean, chapter 5 and verse 14. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbors as self. So, Jesus, through all these prophets and disciples, was trying to tell you, when you're in his body, you, you put on the face of Christ, and from there you fulfill what Christ fulfilled. It's no longer on your hands to fulfill the laws of God no more. It's no longer your duty, your deeds, your works, your righteousness anymore. It's Christ covering you, Christ's face over you, fulfilling the law of God by faith, not by your own works and deeds. This is kind of hard to understand. But keep working on it and then you'll get it sometime in the future if you don't get it now. But we know that the laws of God are not dead and gone. Uh, but they do apply to your life in the body of Christ, His way, by faith in Him, through Him, alone. It is no more the laws applied through your own works, your own hand, your own deeds, your Oh, look at me, I'm um, this and that. No, you, you, you got, you're in the body of Christ hidden. And Christ is your, your, your life now. He, he, he is your life. You're, you no longer live for you no more. It's, nothing is about you no more. Um, go to Galatians. And, uh, no, no, no. We're going to discover... Who is the bride of Christ, y'all? Now that you know who the saints are, and that the saints are the ones who obey the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus, now, who, how is this, these saints linked to the bride of Christ, and who is the bride of Christ? Turn to Matthew chapter 15, verse 24. We got to read what Jesus said, first of all, and then you got to get an understanding of what he's talking about. Matthew 15 and 24 says, But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. This statement is true and will stand true to the very end when God the Father brings down the new Jerusalem 
to the new heaven and new to earth I mean to the new earth wants to bring that new Jerusalem down to the new earth that he made there's going to be 12 gates and on those 12 gates the 12 tribes of the of the names of Israel on each gate if you are not Israel you're not getting through them gates he has only come but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel but you got to remember Jacob the son of Isaac the son of Abraham Jacob was given the name Israel after he was adopted by the father and the son after he was adopted into the promise remember John said um, I'm not worthy well, when he went to baptize Jesus he said I'm not worthy to unloose the, the satchels of some of the loose sandals on his feet uh, that this is the one that came after him but before him now what did he mean before him that means Jesus was already in existence before he came Jesus was God is what he was saying that's why he's before him and he's before everybody else even Adam but on earth in the form of a man was born the second Adam but he's before Adam still but anyway I said that to say this um, all those who believe in Jesus Christ know that Jesus always was he was God and he came in the flesh but he also was God's son him and the Father are one. And he, when he says something, he means it. Now, none of his word would come back void. This is not a lie. You just wasn't taught what this verse meant. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Okay, who is Israel? Turn to uh, Galatians chapter 3 and we're going to read verse 26 through 29 for ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus remember Jesus Christ came to save the whole world as stated in John in the book of John for as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ remember I told you you put on the face of Christ it's no longer about you no more there is neither Jew nor, Je no, Jew nor Greek there is neither bond nor free there is neither male nor female Uh, for, for you are all one in Christ Jesus and if ye be Christless then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise so this simply means that once Christ died took in all your sins died for everyone on the planet and the ones that truly accept him and keep the commandments of God and the faith in Jesus Christ and they, they actually keep them and endure these are the saints of God they are Israel the children of God they take on the name Israel as revelations say uh, revelations 2 and sorry revelations 3 and 12 him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God and he shall go no more out and I will write upon him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God which is New Jerusalem which cometh down out of heaven from my God and I will write upon him my new name okay so in essence while we're waiting on this hope this promise of being changed and resurrected 
into the new body like Jesus Christ has uh, while we're waiting on that enduring on, on this hope and this promise you're grafted into the seed the promise of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob and you become heirs therefore you become Israel because you are now of Abraham's seed whether you're Jew let me put it this way whether you are Shem, Ham, Japheth and all the other races and colors and tongues and everything, all the nationalities out there. If you are a saint of Jesus Christ in his body, you, you, you destroy your life and put on his life. You are Israel now. This is the new Israel. You become the woman, you become the bride of Christ, and the woman and the bride of Christ is Israel. That's why Jesus Christ said he has only come to save the lost sheep of the house of Israel. You would never talk this. You, you are not Christians. You are Israelites in the body of Christ. Because you are adopted. And being adopted of God, you take on that name Israel. That name Israel is given to his children. The children of God. Now the Lord has not forsaken the physical descendants uh, of Israel. He promised to bring them back after the after the Gentiles or uh, the time of the Gentiles are over with. So now you got a great understanding of who is this woman? And you are Israel. You're the Israelites. You're the new Israelites according to what the Bible has explained to us. There's neither Jew or Gentile, there's neither male or female, there's neither bond or free inside the body of Jesus Christ, who put on the face of Christ. Galatians chapter 3 verse 26 through 29 is so important to understanding who you are inside the body of Christ now. If you're a woman, you're not a woman no more. You're Christ. -ess. It's hard to say that. Christ is. Sis. <laughs> Christ is. Sis. Y'all get what I'm saying? <laughs> you belong to Christ. If you're a male, you're you're not a male no more. You are Christ. -es. I, I'm going to get that word right. Christ says. <gasps> Jesus says. That's better. All right. If you are in slavery, in bondage to the work 70 hours a week just to make it. You are no longer in bondage. You're inside the body of Christ. You are freed. If you're a free person, you're the one who makes the checks. Pretty much. Um, or, or you're just living off the land free somewhere. If you're free, you're no longer that either. You're inside the body of Christ, but you are freed inside of him. Of this world. When the promises come. When you are changed and given that free body. I think I'm saying that right on that one there. But y'all bear with me. Whether you're Jew or Greek. That means whether you are the physical descendants of Israel. Or from the other nations. Any one of them. Because Jesus came to save the whole world. You are now Christ. This is Jesus. And I put on his face. You are put on Christ. And you are the children of God. By faith in him. As long as you are in his body. So I pray I explained it that. Uh, pretty well. And let's reference. Revelations chapter. 21 and 11. And 12. Now this is talking about the city of God, New Jerusalem, being brought to the new earth, and had a wall great and high, and had twelve gates. We're going to skip all that other stuff. We're just going to read this part about the gates. And had twelve gates, and at the gates twelve angels, and names written thereon, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. The children of God. Remember, Israel is God is, is God's name given to his adopted son Jacob. But also the strangers who are grafted into Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob's covenant, the promise. 
they also are Israel you have to be Israel to get into this new city are you going to the lake of fire now uh, this video got a little bit long so we're going to make a part two and we're going to discuss about where this woman is going to go is she going to go into heaven before the great tribulations or she, is she going to um, uh, let's say is she's going to escape into heaven before the great tribulation or is she going to escape into the wilderness I think your eyes are going to be open now that you know that you're Israel you're the woman it talks about it's not talking about the new I mean the physical it's not just talking about the physical descendants of Israel it's talking about all who are in the body of Christ they become the new Israel in him because remember everyone has to be saved through Christ now it's no longer the physical descendants of Israel's Israel going out you know and 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 preaching and teaching the world and uh, and getting you grafted into the promise everybody has to be grafted in through Jesus so the physical even the physical descendants of Israel the, the real Hebrew Israelites even they have to abide by Jesus Christ and bring people to Christ not themselves if you got brothers Hebrew Israelite brothers out there trying to bring you to the into the promise by them run from them it's, everything is done through the body of Jesus Christ because he was your final sacrifice on the cross you need him you need his sacrifice to even think about being saved alright go to part 2 thank y'all for um, tuning in and getting an understanding and I pray that you are awakening to the truth and the promise to come at the first resurrection